Welcome to EuroPCR 2025. My name is Chiara De Biase and I have the pleasure to be here today with Dr. Didier Cheche from France and Dr. Kentaro Yashida from Japan. So, welcome guys. I'd like to go a little bit more into the topic of this brief interview that is how to manage the challenges of TAVI in bicuspid. So, Kentaro, can you give an intro uh, of the speciality of this valve respect to tricuspid patient that we used to treat? So, thank you very much, Kier. So actually, the bicuspid disease is kind of the congenital disease and uh, which has the fused uh, rafe or totally type 0 bicuspid. It, the anatomy of the bicuspid it totally depends on each individual, so we need to tailor make the treatment option for each patient. And if you look at the uh, epidemiology of the bicuspid, sometimes the, uh, in China, so we can see the very high mm. incidence of bicuspid. On the other hand, in our country, we don't have that many in the cohort of TAVI, it totally depends on the age. So we need to the, think about the, uh, how old the patient is and how we can optimize the uh, outcome of the treatment for the patient with bicuspid. So first thing to understand, bicuspid, yes, is different, but let's try to understand which bicuspid can be treated or not. Exactly. So did you, can you give us the insights of which are the challenges that we have when this different anatomy mm. needs to be treated? Yeah, that's a very important uh, question, uh, Chiara. And I have to say that given uh, what Kentaro has described, uh, it's more uh, prone to uh, generating complications during the procedure. So uh, you may end up with uh, injury of the aortic root that can be uh, dramatic for the patient. There is a high risk of malposition of the device, regurgitation, a stroke potentially. Uh, that could be, a, we have signals uh, towards higher stroke rate uh, when we go for TAVI in bicuspid artery valves. So we clearly understand that it's more challenging than a tricuspid uh, anatomy. So we have a lot uh, to understand about that. Uh, is that anatomy. something very interesting? Because malpositioning of the device is probably something that we fear to face. So we know that you have been conducting many research to try to cover this yeah. point and to solve. So sizing, is it something that it's important to consider and that can change really the procedure? Uh, yeah, sizing is uh, fundamental. And I'm sure that Kentaro, you have your own sizing uh, methodology, but Chiara, to make it simple, you, you know that we are a big fans of the Bavard methodology. You size uh, the annulus and the intercommissural distance, and you try to understand the configuration of the landing zone. Uh, what is missing from Bavard is the, the estimation of the calcium burden. Uh, but we have so many uh, sizing methodologies that there is a need to try to uh, harmonize things and to come with something that is simple, as Bavard, and uh, accepted. Uh, so we need more trials or potentially bigger registries dedicated on a focusing on a specific sizing methodology for that. Absolutely. And so Didier said sizing, of course, but even calcium. So Kentaro, according to that, if we do the good sizing, then can we improve the implantation of the processes in some way if you have any tips and tricks for this dedicated anatomy? Thank you very much. So Didier performed a very nice study uh, identifying the uh, sizing and uh, it's quite important to identify the type is flared or tapered. And I think that it's quite important to identify it which level is the smallest part of the aortic valve complex. And we also need to take into account the intercommissional length, that is my take. Mm. And uh, the ceiling is also quite important to achieve better result. And if the patient has really severely can't find a rough fit, and they may lead to the residual uh, PBO. And this, there is some study demonstrate that the, there is the uh, higher comorbidity uh, with a patient with severely calcified uh, rafe. So we also need to think about the tailor meeting and optimize the outcome after a type of procedure. So if I can comment on that, is that is just that, of course, this anatomy, you do the sizing, you can face the calcium. So what if during your procedure you want to optimize everything and you need to pre-deal and post-deal to face what you exactly said? Yeah. So we need to take care of that. And probably we can just sum up what we said about bicuspid by saying that bicuspid are frequent in our practice. Different kind need probably 
be considered before treatment with TAVI because with TAVI you can face challenge but you have something that can help you that is the sizing on one side and the good technique of implantation on the other side. But for definite what we can conclude we need more evidence in this patient because data are sort of lacking or coming out from registries but we need bigger one and dedicated one to try to understand more to how to treat at the best this kind of patient. Thank you very much to Thank both you, of Chiara. you. Enjoy Thank the Europe PCR.